Today I'm having a discussion with Mr. Pius Mushiri, the Managing Director of uh, Nabo Capital, an asset management firm uh, based in Nairobi. Let me start by asking you to tell us a little more about Nabo Capital, your origins and uh, some of the milestones that you have achieved in the period that you have been in, in existence. I think the best way to, to trace the origins of Nabo Capital is to go back to 2009 when uh, we were all at Centum. We sat in a room like this and we said, uh, let's look at the opportunities that are available to us, not just in Kenya, but the whole of Africa. And I remember we had only 1% one, 1 investment outside of Kenya. And uh, we made a very fundamental decision to unbundle the portfolio into three business lines, private equity, quoted private equity, which deals with public markets, mm -hmm. and real estate. So I took charge of the quoted private equity, mm -hmm. which really stood for, we, we come from a private equity background, so we were applying our private equity skills mm -hmm. in the listed space. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expanded our scope from Kenya to the whole of Africa. The only market we don't touch, or we did not, uh, we decided not to touch, was South Africa, mm -hmm. because South Africa had similar characteristics as, as other developed economies. Ah, yes, yeah. So, from between 2009 and 20, uh, 2012, 2013, there are about, we had tremendous success. I remember we began with a portfolio of about 2.3 billion, mm -hmm. and over the six years that followed that, we were making about, I think we generated about 7.2 billion shillings mm -hmm. of revenues. Of revenues. Of revenues from 2.3 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. And most of, the cap most of the return was actually coming uh, from outside of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So we're literally importing GDP into the country. Mm -hmm. So quite a significant contribution into... What was our portfolio? The we, revenues? We began with a portfolio of 2.3 billion shillings. Mm -hmm entirely owned by Centum, mm -hmm. and we were generating uh, cumulative uh, uh, revenues of about 7.2, 7.3 billion shillings mm -hmm. over the subsequent uh, six years. Mm -hmm. And that success was also replicated, was being replicated in the other business lines. But this particular one for public markets was quite interesting because we had a lot of people coming to us and saying, okay, you guys, we can see you're doing something great. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we can participate in that uh, trajectory, that track record, uh, without necessarily investing in the Centum share? Mm -hmm. And that is really what triggered us to form a fully-fledged asset management company. Mm -hmm. And we transitioned from a department, quoted private equity, to a fully-fledged investment boutique. Mm -hmm. So we were initially called Centum Asset Managers, but again, because of uh, the conflict of names, uh, you know, sometimes you want to, uh, a customer wants to address us, they would uh, send a letter to Centum. Mm -hmm. We said, no, no, we actually need a distinct identity, mm -hmm. which is important also because we have, our business requires certain level of independence mm -hmm. other than having a common shareholder. So we went for NABO. Mm -hmm. NABO is a Maasai word that means number one. We were very particular about the kind of name that we really wanted. Our business model uh, was, was uh, to invest in Africa, but the capital to invest in Africa was supposed to come not only from Africa, but also from the rest of the world. And therefore, we want, we, our, a big source of our capital, or a big source of our client, was you know, Europe, US. Uh, we wanted an indigenous name. We wanted to be identified as the, the fund manager with the boots on the ground. Uh, we have a lot of guys who are coming from New York, from London, even Kenyans. Uh, but right now, a significant portion of our portfolio is actually uh, foreign investors. So we, we, are, we are so convinced that Africa is a space to invest. But very few people actually have knowledge of Africa. Uh, even the African growth story. It's, it's not a story that Africans themselves are participating. Kenyans, they are participating, participating in the Kenyan story. 
but are they really participating in the African story? So Nabo Capital was identifying or had identified a gap that existed in the market uh, where you have one, one manager who can give you access to various markets in Africa, uh, especially in the listed space. Being a fund manager, we can invest even in private equity, we can invest in real estate on behalf of our clients. Um, and therefore we opened up the space a lot more. But our, we consider ourselves to be an investment boutique. A lot of what we see in this market are what you call plain vanilla fund managers. Mm -hmm. They are almost doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. we, we probably are a bit different from them. Uh, most of their clients are local, most of our clients are international. Mm -hmm. um, most of their, uh, their portfolios are really pension related portfolios. Most of our portfolios are non-pension related portfolios. So we are playing in a, in a sort of a, diff, dis, a niche market and therefore we see ourselves as an investment boutique where we deliver tailor-made solutions to our clients. There have been some recent developments, actually major developments. There's a new law now that caps interest rates. A lot of talk has focused on how this has impacted or is going to impact the banking sector. By looking at it broadly, uh, looking at the entire economy, how do you think this is going to affect the investment uh, environment? I mean, it's not uh, been good news uh, because uh, with the uh, government coming in and uh, through the CBK to control interest rate, um, it sort of sends mixed signals to investors. We are supposed to be a liberal economy and now we are have, starting to experience price control uh, instead of allowing market forces to naturally trim down the profitability of banks. I think we were naturally headed there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the fund management business, there was a lot of activity on cash management. There was a cash management product that was already starting to compete uh, very strongly with what uh, the banks were offering. Yes. Uh, so, so it's unfortunate that we've had to take that direction, and I hope there will be some uh, some uh, amendments going forward. But what literally happened is that uh, we have, with one decision, we sort of um, sliced the wealth of investors and shifted that to customers, um, and therefore you could see, you can see even in the market there. The, the banking uh, stock prices have uh, they've come down with at least thirty percent, each of them, other than maybe one or two banks, which are closely held. So it's uh, there are pains in the market, uh, from an investor point of view. There are also pains in the market from uh, the banking players, because uh, we have forty three banks, which uh, I believe have played a very significant role in penetrating the retail market unlike other markets out there in Africa that we are very familiar with. We have one of the most uh, uh, financially d uh, deepened societies. Uh, the small banks are now losing their competitive edge of pricing because now pricing is, 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 is predetermined and therefore they have no basis to compete. And uh, from an investor point of view, I'm asking myself, why should I put money in a tier two, tier three, tier four bank when I can put money in a tier one bank, take less risk and get the same return? It, so naturally what, what, what it does then, the small banks which were very niche oriented uh, are, are really going to be surviving. There is a second wave, uh, which is uh, the local banks versus the international banks. We will tend to, to feel safer with the international banks. So is that, is that really progressive from a local uh, corporate uh, development point of view? I don't think so. Uh, so we are t we'll tend to feel safer with the city groups, we'll tend to feel safer with the Barclays Bank, we'll tend to feel safer with the Stanchart. And I believe they are probably experiencing a flood of money mm -hmm. uh, yes. going, going to them today. Where will NABO Capital be in five years' time? I see NABO Capital as a, as a you know, um, 
household name, not just in Kenya, but in, in uh, the major markets in Africa. Uh, I see Nabo Capital as a, as a household name amongst global pools of funds who are seeking to invest in, 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 in Africa. I see, I see Nabo Capital being seen as a trusted partner, a trustworthy partner to explore opportunities in Africa. Um, yeah, and I see as a huge uh, in terms of scale, innovation and profitability. <laughs>